The animation that you made in After Effects is now ready to be handed over to the developer. And to do that, we'll be using the Lottie Files plugin for Adobe After Effects. It's a free plugin and this is what converts your animation into lines of code which can be embedded into your app or website. To do that, the first step is to download the Lottie Files plugin. Let's head off to lottiefiles.com. Here under the Tools tab, click on Adobe AE plugin. Once you're in this page, scroll all the way down to this place and you'll see two options for downloading the plugin via Adobe Exchange or you can directly download the plugin which you need to install using ZXP Player. Once the plugin is installed, you'll find it under Window, Extensions, Lottie Files. This is the plugin that you have just installed. If you're a first time user, you will be prompted to log into your Lottie Files account and you see I'm already logged in, so I will just close this. And there are three tabs here. The first one is for previewing what you animate, which I'm going to show you in a while. The second tab shows the preview of all the animations that you have created so far. Of course, everything is linked to your Lottie Files account. And the third tab is the Explore tab. This is the place where you can explore tons of free animations created by designers all over the world. And you can search for anything and you can use them directly and also download the After Effects files and manipulate them if you want to. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to export your animation using Lottie Files plugin and how to make it work for web as well as mobile platforms. Before we begin, it's very important to understand that any animation that you make has to be Lottie compatible. After Effects has tons of features, but not everything is supported by Lottie. To know what is supported, you can visit airbnb.io. It has a list of all the features that are supported by Android, iOS, Windows, and every other platform. So you will know what you can use and what you should be avoiding. This is because the way Lottie works is it converts your animation into lines of code. And once that happens, it becomes significantly different from a GIF or a video like an MP4. And that's also the reason that a Lottie can be very easily manipulated and made interactive because everything is essentially lines of code. Without further ado, let's go and try and export one of the animations using Lottie file plugins right away. Here's a sample animation that I made for the demonstration. Uh, think of it like a single bladed fan. It just rotates about one of its axes. This shape is an intersection of two circles and I have merged them using the merge path option using the intersect mode. These are the different modes that are available. So I have used the intersect mode for this and I've just animated the rotation from position one to position two. So it makes it looks like it's a single bladed fan. Let's see how we can export this using Lottie files. To do that, I'll go to window, extension and Lottie files. Once the plugin is open, in the first tab here, you'll see a list of all the compositions that you have in this After Effects file. In my case, there are a few more because I have a few more things which I'm going to show you in a bit. But right now, we are working on the file FAN1. So to export this, all that I need to do is click on this button right here. And once I click, it renders and you see a preview, but this is not how you intended it to be. Something is certainly not right. In this case, Lottie didn't recognize the fact that I have used a merge path function of After Effects, which means Lottie doesn't support it. So to get the same effect using a different technique, we will have to figure out an alternate way. To do that, I have another composition here, Fan2, where I have done the same thing, but with a different technique. All that I have done is I've created this shape using a slightly different technique and not the merge path function of After Effects. I've used one main shape, which is a circle, and then I've used another mask out there. I've used the track mat, and I have ensured that only the intersection of these two circles are shown, whereas the first one is the mask, and the second one is the main shape, and I have used an alpha mat mask. And I've also made the mask as a child of the main shape. So now when I go ahead and rotate the main shape, you see, we get the same desired effect. And this time, when I export this using Lottie files, when I go and click on Fan2, you will see it's just like the way you wanted it. So we got the same desired effect by simply adopting a slightly different technique. After you have rendered, as you see the preview on your screen, there are a few more things that you can do using this plugin. All that you'll have to do is just scroll under. Of course, you can pause and use the seek bar to see 
different positions of the animations and you can come down and even select backgrounds for it in case you want to see how it would look on a light mode versus a dark mode or versus any other background you can use the hex code feature and put any color on the color wheel and check how the preview would look on a certain colored background and here's another interesting thing it's called the render graph and in this while it's playing you get to see the impact it would have on your CPU. While the animation is playing, it shows you a graph and it gives you an idea how much of impact it would have on the CPU of your system or the mobile device where it's going to get implemented. So if you feel that it's a little too much, you can always go back and simplify your animation. I've generally seen that the more the number of shapes that you have in your animation, the heavier it tends to get on your CPU. But these days with modern devices having better and better hardware, it shouldn't be the biggest concern but still, you might want to check this out. So this render graph is going to be handy for you. I can also preview the animation in my mobile device without having to go to Lottie Files website directly from this plugin. So if you scroll down here in the plugin, you will see an option test in Lottie Files mobile app. And it'll show you a list of compatible devices that is connected with your account. And when you click on this button, you will see it gets pushed directly into your mobile device. Just like that. It's because I'm logged in using my same account on my mobile Naughty Files app as well as on the plugin. Now it's very important that you preview it in all different platforms because the way Naughty works is similar to a video platform. There's always a player. There's a Naughty player. iOS has its own Naughty player. Android has its own Naughty player. Similarly, web has its own Naughty player. So when you see it on iOS and when you see it on web, it's the respective players that it's playing and the compatibility of these players could be different. As of today, it's the iOS that's the bad boy in the lot because there are fewer things which the iOS player supports compared to Android and web. So if your animation works flawlessly on an iOS device, it's likely to work on other devices as well. All right, enough of previewing. Now let's see what's the final asset that you hand off to your developer is going to be like. So back to the Lottie Files plugin, in this, you will see it has an option called save to PC. So when you click on this, there are two options. So you can either save it as a JSON file, that's a .json, which is a more popular format. Another one .lotty. Now that's something that you might not have heard before. Now to know what the difference between them are, let's try and do both. First, let me go ahead and save it as a JSON file. So I click on lotty JSON and it asks me to go to a location. I will name it fan fan and I'll just go ahead and save it. So it saves itself as fan.json that you see here. Now this fan.json file is the one that you're going to hand off to your developer who will take care of the rest of the bits. But now your developer or anyone else who you had given this file to may not have access to After Effects. So how would they preview it? Because this is essentially lines of code like you see here. One way to do that is to go to lottiefiles.com slash preview. Here, you can upload your JSON file and see exactly how it's going to play. Here's my JSON file. I will drag and drop it here. And there I get to see its preview. And it has got a few cool features as well. I can go ahead and change the background color to whatever I want. I can try out how it might look on dark mode or on white mode or anything else. I can also preview how it's going to look on mobile. I have an iOS device and I have installed the Lottie Files app. And when I go to this tab called Handoff, I get to see a host of things here. I can convert to GIF, I can edit the animation, but most interestingly, it also has a QR code. And when you take the app and scan the QR code, you get to see the same animation in your mobile device and it shows how compatible it would be in this case for an iOS device. Similarly, if you have an Android phone and an Android app of the Lottie files, you can do the same and see how it would preview exactly on an Android device. That is when you implement in an Android app or an iOS app as the case may be. Now let's see how would it be to export the animation as a .lottie file. So I click on save to PC once again and this time I click on .lottie. It asks for a name again. I give it a name of fan and it saves itself as fan.lottie this time versus fan.json the previous time. And let's see how fan.lottie is going to preview. I go back to lottiefiles.com slash preview and I drag and drop the fan.lottie this time. And it's animating just like before. There's no difference at all. Let's see how it previews on my iOS device here. 
I click on the handoff tab and I scan the QR code which is present and it works just like before. So there's no difference in the quality between the animations exported using .json or .lottie as formats. Let's see the file size, just for the heck of it. .json, when I see the info, it has a size of 4KB. Impressive. Now let's see the size of .lottie. It has a size of 1KB. Even better, isn't it? Well, it doesn't matter for a smaller animations like this, for bigger animations, for more complicated animations, this difference in size could be significant and you could make your developer really happy by giving a smaller size file which is .lotty and probably the more modern way of doing stuff. If you want to upload your work, your animations into the Lottie Files community, you can do that using the Lottie Files After Effects plugin, right there. Right beside the Save to PC button, there's another button called Upload. And when you click on that, it uploads it, it uploads your animation directly to your profile at lottiefiles.com. There are tons of awesome designers who have been contributing to the open source community by uploading their work on lottiefiles.com. Anyone is free to use them in their respective work. So if you're into it, I suggest you do it as well.